Hello and welcome back to Advanced Composition with Professor Kent Lee. We've been talking about professional writing and today we are going to continue this by talking about cover letters. So as I mentioned before, in the old days, we would mail in a resume printed out on paper, hard copy, and then the cover letter goes on top of it. We put it in the envelope. So it's called a cover letter for that reason. And they take it out and they see the cover letter first and then your resume uh, behind it. So what's the purpose of a cover letter and what are typical components of a cover letter? Talk for a minute review, and review. So first the purpose. The resume details your hard skills. So hard skills, things that have like a name, a degree, a certificate, um, a particular job where you worked. Um, thing, those, those are hard skills, things you can name. It indicates your, your experience, your educational experience and work experience. It, um, that's basically what it says. The resume, uh, the cover letter gives more information, more that's, that's not on the uh, resume. So for example, it explains your motivation. Why do you want to work there? Why do you want to apply to the company or the organization? Uh, what are your soft skills? Uh, why would you be of benefit to the organization? Uh, how did you hear about the job opening? Um, it, it explains particularly about you. You're selling yourself and your qualifications and your skills. Um, and the cover letter particularly details explains things that are not necessarily apparent from the so apparent from the resume and things that are not on the resume. So it explains your it's a more holistic explanation of your key skills or qualifications or reasons for applying and your interest for the company. So the cover letters um, at the top, you've got the, well, the, your address and contact information, phone number or email, probably both actually. Uh, date, of course, today's date. Then the recipient's address, who are you sending it to? Maybe the personnel office at LG, for example, the hiring manager, the hiring committee. Um, if you know the person's name, you begin with a greeting, Mr. Smith, Ms. May, something like that, Ms. not Mrs. or Miss, but Ms. That's a standard greeting. Uh, many times you don't know who the person is. It could be just to whom it may concern. Dear Madam Sirs, dear search committee, if what's more of maybe for an educational environment, where there's a search committee of teachers. Then of course you've got um, the body of the cover letter and we'll see examples of the kinds of contents of the body. Then the conclusion and an invitation to them to contact you if, you're, if they are interested in your signature. If you look at examples in the book, uh, there are examples in, I think it's section 12.3. Okay, so there is an example of the typical structure. It's uh, section 12.5 in the book, and it's on page 182 in my book. And then I've got kind of a sample uh, in 12.3, page 183. And I've got some more samples later. Uh, if you look at these examples, first you've, uh, um, so again, you see, for example, in the sample on page 183, um, you've got the sender's address at the top. And there are different ways of doing this. We'll top left, top right. Probably the recipient's address is more commonly in, on the left, top left. Um, your address can be the above it and then top left or it can be over in the top right, it doesn't matter. And of course, you've got the date. Uh, now this is kind of an older example. So today, of course, you would have your email uh, and phone number up there too uh, with your address before the date. So the opening, your Ms. Rennick, for example, and you see the paragraph style, it's block paragraph style. You can actually put maybe in a little extra padding between paragraphs, uh, but uh, it's block paragraph, no, no indents, no indentations, um, a little bit of space between paragraphs, and that's it. And then, sincerely yours, and then the signature, 
And then you might say enclosure. I don't know if people really still do that, but in the old days when you sent in paper copies and an envelope, the cover letter would then say enclosure, resume, just to make people know that, that people know that there's a resume. It should be a resume in the same envelope, uh, physical envelope. Uh, you see the sample good cover letter number one on the next page, page 184. Again, you see the address, the sender's address on the top left, and the recipient's address on the top right, and the top left of the uh, recipient's address. And a greeting, dear Ms. Gruber. And colons are kind of a little more formal business style rather than commas, but some people use commas, I guess. Uh, at the bottom, sincerely, it is kind of better for letter writing than you know, regards or best or something like that. And the person's signature nowadays, of course, you can just create a uh, a graphic signature on your on your tablet and save it as a as a PNG or a GIF file or something to put in there. That's what I do. Now under the name, you, there's uh, you, you see in these uh, two samples this and also in the next page in 185, initials DSR, and in the next page 185, uh, what you see is uh, SEJ colon MMS. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Now this is old style. I don't know. If People really do this. This was done in the old days for record keeping purposes. If a, somebody wrote a letter, somebody at a company, um, like a supervisor, typed up the letter and sent it. For record keeping purposes, they would keep a copy of the letter, uh, or at least on their computer, they would save a copy. And the initials of the person who actually typed the letter are in small or lowercase small letters here, DSR. The person actually kept it. If he typed this letter on a company computer, he would have to save a copy of this on the hard drive with initials to indicate DSR as the initials of the one who actually typed it. In the next example, we have Sandra Johnson, uh, SEJ. In this case, if somebody dictated the letter and then a secretary typed it, then SEJ, the capital letters are for the person who dictated a letter, colon, MMS are the initials of the secretary who actually typed it up. This is for record keeping purposes. I don't think you'd do this today uh, necessarily. I'll check for what's common in your culture and your area of work, but uh, I don't see this today anymore. Uh, but you might see this. Um, if, maybe if you work at a company someday and you have to type, send official letters and emails. Um, so MMS, small letters, would be the secretary who typed it. Now, if if I'm a supervisor, I'm, I would probably not want to have my secretary type uh, an application letter if I'm applying to another company. That would kind of raise red flags and start rumors. Oh, people would know, oh, so boss is looking for a new job. What's going on? Well, that would be weird. All right. Uh, so we see here some examples of cover letters. So here we have two good cover letter samples, and I want you to look at these. Uh, now, are they great examples? Would they automatically get an interview? Uh, take a look at these two sample cover letters. So it's good cover letter number one, good cover letter number two. Uh, these are good, but are they really good? Are they great or are they just good? So, so. Uh, what do you think? Do you see any weaknesses? Do you see any problems? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? Uh, pause the video and discuss this for a bit. All right, sorry for some image problems. Uh, I'm using a Logitech camera and I don't recommend Logitech webcams. They're not very good. All right, let's look at the cover letter, the good one. 
Um, the first paragraph begins by stating where the person found out about the job opening. And that's always a good thing to do in the first paragraph. Companies are advertising in different places for their job openings, and they like to know which places are bringing in responses from applicants. And then the person indicates uh, probably which um, job opening and which department uh, they're interested in applying. Especially helpful if the company is probably advertising multiple job openings. And in the second paragraph, second and third paragraphs, uh, the body paragraphs, that's usually where you then might want to talk about and highlight your key strengths, your qualifications, um, your assets, and what you can bring to the company. And so in cover letters, the emphasis is always on what you can bring to the company. When you kind of, you're selling yourself, your key assets and strengths, but it's always in terms of what the company would want and what the company needs or how this could benefit the company. Um, she doesn't quite do that in the second paragraph. It's, um, uh, she does say, talk kind of vaguely about some of her accomplishments, but it's pretty vague. I think the par second paragraph is a little weak. Uh, it's not very specific and it's not gonna sound too interesting to the company, to people at the company reading this. Third paragraph is a little bit better. Always be careful about when you use adjectives to describe yourself. Anyone could say I'm hardworking, I'm industrious, I'm outgoing. Anyone could, anyone could say that. Um, she does give some information. You, 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 it certainly helps to describe yourself, but always explain it or give specific examples, specific explanations and examples that are interesting. Uh, if you say that you're industrious and hardworking, immediately follow it up with a clear, specific, interesting example or examples or explanations of in what way are you hardworking in a way that's really unique and would be of interest to this company. Uh, uh, anytime you describe yourself, of course, it should mainly be focused on relatively recent stuff, not you know when you were 13 years old. Um, it, so she has some decent details. It's not great, it's not terribly compelling, but it's, it's okay. This might get her an interview. Him, sorry, this might get him an interview. Um, so it shows he's been able to, he's got good time management, work ethic, okay. Fine, would help to have some more specific, interesting explanations. Uh, and finally, it concludes with a kind of an invitation. So typically cover letters will conclude with an invitation. Um, please contact me if you're interested for an interview, basically. Um, you usually provide them your phone number and email. Um, if there's some reason you prefer one or the other, you can state it there, please, or any limitations, please phone me in the evenings or um, please email me or something like that. If for some reason you can't take phone calls, you know, say so. Second cover letter, uh, I think is better. So kind of dropping a name in the first paragraph he met their director that's kind of nice inside info inside track okay uh, you might meet somebody and hear about you know at a, at a business conference or an academic conference or business meeting and find out about this job opening um, that's cool and so there's kind of a, again in the first paragraph um, you indicate kind of what, what job you're applying for and why, at least in one sentence, why? Uh, because I'm a strong uh, leader or I'm really good in uh, a particular type of marketing technique or something like that. Therefore, I would be an asset to your company. Um, second paragraph. Um, now, usually, of course, you don't just list, accomplish, list the same stuff that's in your resume. Uh, so the person doesn't just say I have a PhD in statistics, but then 15 years of experience in this general kind of field or skill and particular kind of training, particular abilities. So this person, uh, Sandra Johnson, talks about her particular abilities in different areas, uh, her particular expertise. Um, and in the third paragraph, she talks about some of her leadership skills and accomplishments, some specific examples. Uh, Last paragraph is kind of a nice uh, compliment. I've heard great things about you and look forward to meeting you personally. Uh, so I think this is a stronger cover letter than the first one. It's more specific. Uh, it seems more interesting, has more interesting information, more interesting contents about the person. 
Uh, and it's not too self-focused. It's again, focused enough on the company in terms of this is what I could bring to the company. So those are some common elements in cover letters. Uh, you indicate your interest in a particular position, how you found out about the job opening, uh, and then you try to, to sell yourself. You talk in convincing detail about your strengths, your assets, your qualifications that the company would be interested in uh, and, and why you would be a good candidate for that company, why you would be a good match for that company, or why you think you would be a good match. So again, it's not just about yourself, but it's about what you, why you would be a good person for the company. So what are some common mistakes in cover letters? What do you think? Pause for a minute and think, what are common mistakes, the most common mistakes? Okay, the most common mistakes uh, for cover letters and also resumes, uh, grammar errors, spelling mistakes, you know, very mechanical errors like with punctuation and uh, capitalization and things like that. Uh, people don't proofread their cover letters and resumes and they just print it out and send it off. That's the most common mistake. Even the best of us can make mistakes that we don't catch. You should always have at least two people check your cover letters and your resumes before you ever send them out. Always get a couple of people, a couple of people who are good at proofreading to check your documents uh, over carefully. You should check carefully and you should get a couple of people to check and help you. Those are the most common mistakes. This next most common, common mistake. Well, imagine what happens. You're sending out applications to a lot of different companies. So you've got one resume that probably works for everybody, but then you've got cover letters. You're sending out cover letters to 12 companies. What's the most common mistake here? What's the most common mistake here? Well, you send out a, even though you've personalized the letters, hopefully for the different companies, but then you send out, for example, a letter to LG Talk and but it's addressed to the Samsung Microelectronics personnel office talking about how you'd love to work at Samsung Microelectronics. Getting the cover letter wrong, sending the wrong cover letter. Either you don't personalize it to the particular company or you send uh, so it sounds like a generic cover letter and it's kind of obvious you didn't think about the particular company, or you just change the company name and that's it. Uh, and it doesn't sound personalized to the particular company, and you even got the wrong company name on the cover letter. Those are common mistakes. Uh, any of these, I mean, the companies are getting a lot of applications and they're gonna look for any little thing um, as an excuse to discard it. So as soon as they read your cover letter and they see it's addressed to the wrong person, of course, they're gonna throw it away. Or if they just see a little spelling or grammar mistake, they're gonna throw it out. Yeah, they're gonna be, they need to be really picky. They want people who are detail oriented. Now we've got some actual bad ones uh, on starting from page 186 in the book for poor samples, poor cover letters. What are the various problems you see in these cover letters? And would you even give the person a chance of coming for an interview? What do you think of these poor cover letters? What are the specific problems here? Discuss for a while.
Okay, the first one by Norman Numskull. It's got spelling, mechanical mistakes, even in the first line, New York Times, uh, capitalization problems. I am interest, not interested in this position. Just responding to new piece, paper, newspaper ad. Okay, that's all right. But there's no indication here of why they're applying, at least in one phrase, uh, a reason uh, for why they're applying in the first paragraph, just a brief summary reason. Uh, next, the second paragraph is really just a repeat, a rehash of contents from the resume. Don't just repeat what's on the resume. They can look at the resume and see what degrees you have and how long you've worked at each company. They can already see that. Um, this is just redundant. It's repetitive. And there's no need to see all, the, all of this. Then they, the person mentions, I worked at your competitor. Why? Why would you mention that? I mean, yeah, you're, you don't even need to mention the company here. It's, it's on your resume, and they know that's a competitor. But why are you mentioning it here? Are you trying to imply that you're willing to share inside information about um, the company with your new employer? That's illegal. Uh, many types of that sharing of uh, especially confidential information from your past company. Uh, I don't know the exact laws, but depending on what kind of information is, it's unethical or illegal. And the company is not going to want to be put in a position where you're implying I can, if, the, if that's the person's intention here to apply, I can share confidential information. They can get sued for that. Then a bullet list. Bullet lists are just really unprofessional. It's not professional for a professional writing document like this. It was, uh, this is not a PowerPoint presentation. Put bullets in your PowerPoint, but not here. Um, and then it's just detailing some random facts. It's not entirely clear that he was really, really responsible for these accomplishments personally. Yeah, you know, they happened while he was maybe in a, um, a manager there, but it's not clear that he was really, he played a key role in these accomplishments. And just, you don't need to mention all the numbers, like 30%, three weeks, 25%. You don't need to mention that. Just in prose, in regular sentences, explain how you were involved in interesting accomplishments. They should be interesting. They should be compelling, persuasive to the new employer. Uh, I can make a real contribution. How? You haven't really explained that. I plan to call your office next Wednesday. Oh, don't do that. That's bad etiquette. You always wait for them to call you or email you. You invite them to contact you. You don't want to bother them by phoning or emailing them. That's not really good etiquette. Um, next one, Ron Rambling. Okay. Uh, the first one was kind of a bit self-focused. This one is too. Um, it's all kind of self-announcing or comment. A lot of them are kind of comments on the comments on the obvious. Here, um, some more, I'm submitting my resume. Okay, yeah, that's obvious. You'll find my background interesting. Don't say that. Just talk about what's interesting in your background. Uh, Please consider it's kind of overly formal or wordy, a lot of wordy, wordy language. Uh, again, I have a BA, I got some award. What award is this? Why, why do we care? Uh, I'm considered an outgoing friendly person. Yeah, so what? Uh, unless this is like a marketing position and you're maybe outgoing and friendly or not so relevant, pick a quality that's actually relevant to the position and then give a specific example or explanation of, of that quality. Um, or for this kind of job, maybe more likely a particular skill or qualification um, as well. So a personal, qual a relevant quality or, and then a relevant skill or qualification. Uh, but each of these, he, oh, this, this third paragraph he mentions all kinds of adjectives, open, sincere, honest. It's just an adjective salad. It's just throwing in adjectives. Anyone could say, I am honest, sincere, loyal, dedicated. He, he's just throwing in adjectives unnecessarily into a, a word salad. 
pick a key skill a key and a key quality and explain specifically uh, about your particular skills or assets and about a particular personal work related quality. Uh, the next paragraph, I spent some time in the Peace Corps. Yeah, you should have something interesting to say about yourself and your self development. But then he says, I learned the true meaning of life, giving to others. It sounds very cliche, very vague, very cheesy and all. Uh, say something specific. Then he talks about his, his salary. You don't ever talk about salary. Uh, in a cover letter or resume. Even during the interview, you don't want to talk about salary stuff. It's not appropriate. Uh, so it sounds very selfish the way he's talking about it here. Next one, number three, Cynthia Self Love. What have you got here? Um, the first paragraph is he's applying for a job because he got fired. Okay. It's very self centered. Um, it's like, okay, cue the sad violin. Play a sad song here. Um, she talks about her goals in the, in the cover letter. It's all about her goals, her, her preferences, her expectations. Cover letters are supposed to be focused on the employer's needs and interests. Why would they want to hire you? How would you benefit the company? She's all about herself. I want this, I want this, I want this. And then her salary. This is just very selfish. There is no interesting, there are no interesting contents here. No compelling reason why she has any skills or qualities or assets to bring the company. It's all about her. Very self-focused. This is going to go in the trash. Number four, Brandon Boring. Uh, a lot of like obvious statements. I'm writing to apply for a position here. I've enclosed a copy of my resume. Uh, I trust this resume will continue everything. I'm sitting at my desk, I'm typing this letter, I'm breathing, I'm tying my shoe. Obvious statements, this is all self-announcing. It's just announcing what I'm doing. You get to the point, say something interesting. You're applying to this position, why? Next paragraph, again, it's just repeating information from the resume. Boring, boring, boring. There's nothing interesting here. Don't just say you work there. If you say you work there, then that would be a lead-in, simply a lead-in to some important achievement or some important way you grew professionally or personally at that workplace. Uh, this is all just repetition. It's boring. Um, the third paragraph, really boring details, like your attendance at work. Okay, fine, I can furnish references. So what? That's obvious, should be obvious. Again, salary, boring, and selfish um, the whole letter is very wordy it's a lot of obvious statements a lot of first person statements or too many it's, uh, not as bad as the previous one the Cynthia self-love one but still so a, a lot of I statements too. some I statements are naturally necessary but there are too many in these last two letters too many I statements too much self-focus um, this is going to go in the trash it's terribly boring the person hasn't said in anything interesting about himself or why he would, why the company should be interested in him. Uh, what could he bring to the company? Nothing. The next page, um, there's an actual cover letter I use for getting uh, a job. Uh, I use this as my actual sample. Uh, be before my PhD, I did a couple of master's degrees and I took a year off from school to work in Korea as a university English teacher, kind of a, something like a Kangsa, foreigner Kangsa type position, uh, teaching freshman English. Uh, so that was my probably my first job, my first real job. It was really fun too. So I uh, talk about how I learned. Uh, briefly, I learned how I learned about this, the, the school and the workplace, the job, um, my uh, background. So you probably in a cover letter, you're going to you summarize your background or experience, but in terms of... Uh, what you achieved or what you learned or how you grew, what kind of skill did you gain from that that's rele relevant to this new job you want to do. It's a bit long. Uh, I think it, uh, some details could be left out. Um, the body paragraphs are a bit wordy. Some unnecessary details I think can be left out. Um, but I got the job anyway. 
it was successful. I got an interview and got the job. And I worked there. Um, great experience. Um, I went back uh, uh, after my PhD and after a couple of other jobs. I returned to this department as a professor uh, later on in life um, because it was a really good workplace. Uh, anyway, so this basically talks about, you know, my qualifications, likely qualifications, relevant experience and accomplishments while in graduate school, um, as well as teaching experience and interest, my motivation for teaching. You know, I talk about my, especially in the third body paragraph, I talk about my interest in teaching there, uh, why I want to apply there. Uh, I do state that, I do clarify um, that I have a uh, a name that sounds Korean, but I'm actually, of course, white and native English speaker. Uh, Lee is an old Anglo-Saxon English name. Uh, I do explain that. Okay, some questions to think about for next time. Um, what are differences between resumes and cover letters? We're going to look at resumes next time, and I, that includes the differences between resumes in Korea or East Asian countries versus international or Western uh, English speaking countries and then CVs, what are CVs? So see you then.